This is my actual review video for the Ender 3 by Creolty. This may not be very good for sales commissions, but I think a review should point out everything. And a lot of reviews do not do that. In summary, if you are mechanically inclined, if you're able to sort out problems and troubleshoot things on your own, if you enjoy doing that sort of thing, this is an excellent little kit. It has some very good parts and pieces in it. It does have issues that you will have to address. If you're willing to do that, you can get this for a good price. And I have the links and discount coupon listed in the description for this video. I expect this to be a very good printer once I'm done with it. If you are not mechanically inclined, if you are not able to troubleshoot and come up with solutions on your own, do not buy this. You will be very unhappy. I guarantee you. Having said that, the rest of the video, I'll go through this printer item by item, point by point, show you what I think are the strong points and what I think the issues are. After that, the final decision is yours. I spent a lot of time on Thingiverse researching what other people had found to be improvements or accessories that would make this a better printer. I ended up printing 80 parts for this printer which took 140 hours and then I printed another 22 parts that I tried on here that I didn't like and did not use. That all takes time and fortunately I have another printer, the CR10. I cheated a little bit on this assembly and all the parts for this were printed on the CR10 while I was sorting out other issues with this printer. The main one being the alignment of the lead screw with the Z-axis stepper. I don't like putting something together and then having to take it apart again to change out an accessory item or whatever. I'd rather just build it all at one time to be done with it. As it turned out, there were enough issues on this thing that I ended up taking it apart and putting it together several times before I completed the assembly. Having been told, you should well expect having to do that with this kit. The Ender 3 is a 3D printer kit and it's made up of some very good components. The carriages, the hot end, the hot end carriage, the extruder, the controller. These are all identical items that are on the CR-10 and the CR-10 has had a very good reputation. So they've used these to make this kit and this really is not a kit that I was expecting. When they said I was going to get a kit, I expected a box full of parts and a bag of bolts. That's not the case with this. There's a lot of sub-assemblies. There's a lot of this that's already put together. And why there are so many issues on this, I really don't understand it. Some of them are just silly. Having an open fan where things can come off the print table and go through the fan, that's poor layout. Having the back side of the controller uncovered, that's no big deal. That's an easy fix for whoever's buying this. This is a nice compact size. It has a much smaller footprint than the CR-10. And I've had the CR-10 for quite a while and I have never printed anything on the CR-10 that couldn't be printed on this size table. Being able to get this for less than $200, I think it's around $179 at the time that this video is being made plus shipping. That's a very good price. This bed has no insulation on here on the bottom. Does not seem to be a problem. This heats up in about three or four minutes. It's fast. I've printed a few objects with this and it seems to print well. The first issue, it came with the wrong power cord. That's an easy fix for me, but maybe not for somebody else. Having a milled section where all the wires from the motherboard pass with sharp edges, that's an issue. One that, again, is easily fixed by a hobbyist. This carriage is difficult to adjust, at best. The hotbed carriage on the CR-10 has six wheels. Three are fixed and are directly opposite the adjustable eccentric wheels. Generally, you get them close, get these outside wheels to where they're spinning free, adjust this one until this is a nice fit, very carefully adjust one end and then the other until you have a bed that's not wiggling and you haven't over tightened the wheels. The carriage on the Ender 3, they have a staggered pattern. So you have two fixed wheels here and then two eccentrics. 
The best you can hope for is to back this one off. Try to get these three adjusted just like you would on the three wheels of the carriage over here on the Z-axis. Then as soon as you try to adjust this one to where it's uh, riding into V-Track without slipping, it throws this off. When I said in my other video, you want to adjust this to where there's no clunk, you're not flat spotting those wheels, you're probably going to have a little clunking. And on the CR-10, I have just a trace of that, but as soon as the bed heats up and has been running for a while, everything expands and it goes away and that's probably going to be the case with this too especially with no insulation under this bed having the open cooling fan here that's a bad layout design but again something that's relatively easy to fix by a hobbyist another issue with this fan is it does not come on until the filament cooling fan comes on I have seen that disappoints a number of people on Thingiverse that would seem to be a bit of a programming error if that is user changeable, I do not know how to do that. Some people think that having the upper end of the leaf screw unsupported is an issue. I don't. On the CR-10, there's a bearing in here inside a, a plastic block, and you can move that thing back and forth like that. That bearing does absolutely nothing to support the end of the leaf screw on the CR-10. The issue here needs to be proper alignment between the lead screw nut and the stepper motor. Some people think Creelty already knew about the problem when they made the instructions because they said not to tighten these screws. That's not what it says. It says do not over tighten these. You don't want to break them. This T-nut is fairly loose on this lead screw. It allows for a bit of angular misalignment. But the problem, this lead screw was sitting over here about one centimeter or three-eighths of an inch out from being properly aligned. And in my video I go into how to fix that, correcting the bend in this carriage plate that holds the extruder and also holds this T-nut. That could be a difficult fix for a lot of people. Having these wires loose just coming out the back of this printer is uh, kind of an accident waiting to happen. This type of arrangement is available on Thingiverse. This is a very nice system. But without it, it's very easy for the hot end cable or this ribbon cable going up to the extruder and the X stepper to get tangled up back here behind this table when it retracts. I have found that a lot of this filament can be brittle and you do not want to run it around sharp bends and stuff. They really have not given an adequate mount for this filament spool up here because there's no good way, as received, for that filament to make its way through this thing without bending this filament at a very sharp angle. I have shown how to improve this in my other video. When you start using this, it will smell like something's burning, and it will continue for about eight hours of actual use. But you have a lot of things here that have never been hot before. The heating element, the surface on the bed, power supply, motors, electronics, all that stuff tends to give off a bit of uh, chemical smell. Known to the state of California as carcinogenic. But anyway, that goes away after about 8 to 10 hours. Be advised, have a window open and an exhaust fan. The table is not exactly square with the y-axis. Doesn't really bother me. I've chosen to ignore that until such time as I take this bed apart again. This printing surface or scrub surface or whatever they call it, I'm not really sure what the true intent of that surface is. This is a heated bed, so I have to assume it was intended to be heated. Normal operating temperature for me is around 60 centigrade. That's 135 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty hot. Four hours into using this, the surface started curling up, and I put some binders on here, hoping that that would solve the problem. Yesterday I was doing a seven-hour print, a fairly large one, that took up the full surface of the bed and this end was lifting and warping like crazy. Towards the end of that print I started hearing popping and what I was hearing was this surface. I've got two large blisters in this right here and here. What I was hearing was that surface coming up. Something under there, I assume the adhesive is gassing off and causing that bubble up. Now that and I'm sure expansion has something to do with it. So you can run this up to about 60 centigrade 
let it sit there for about a half hour, come out here and peel this thing off of there and find something else to put on there, a glass mirror or another print surface that you think will work for you. So be advised of that as well. There are two screws that hold this carriage plate onto this 2020 member. One is here and one is here. And in the following photo, you can see how close this is drilled and tapped to the edge of this. Way too close. Or this has been cut off too short. These are two screws that a user wants to have very tight. Because the only way you can adjust that, you got to take all of this off the top to get that carriage back out of there to be able to have access to these two screws. Having that that close to the edge means it's very easy to strip out. So it's something you need to be careful of. There's no reason to cut that that short. This could just as well be another eighth or three eighths of an inch longer. It's up for grabs whether the fan that's blowing across the heat sink is efficient enough, but the duct that's on the bottom of this squirrel cage blower, which is the filament cooling fan, that is a joke, and is a joke on the CR-10, and was one of the first things that we changed. Now we used a pet fang unit on the CR-10, but I have found a design from a gentleman who I believe lives in the Dominican Republic. You take this fan and mount that on there, and that goes over the heat sink. And then there's a couple of different type coolers that go on there, one of which uses a larger blower and it more efficiently blows air around the nozzle. It's the efficiency of the cooling air going around the nozzle which will cool the filament that has just been laid down on the previous layer. And it's that that will help prevent separation from your build plate and warping. There's another one that's uh, kind of simple and your nozzle is right in the center of that. The Y-axis end stop originally had this bracket which placed this micro switch about a half inch further back here. When this table came back, the nozzle on the extruder was out past the edge of the table. This new bracket is available on Thingiverse and it moves that end stop about a half inch that way. Unfortunately, they mount this by drilling and tapping holes into this 2040 V-Track. Had those been on those T-nuts, you would have been able to adjust that back and forth. If the other issues weren't annoying enough, just when I was getting ready to make my first print, there's a wire that comes out of here to plug into this Z-axis end stop. This end stop has a three-pin socket, and the wire that came out of this control box or the motherboard had a two-pin plug on the end of it. I fixed this with a radio control Fataba J plug, cut the polarizing lug off of it, and soldered that to the end of that wire. I don't like it, but it works. I'll try to get the correct wire at some point.